everyone! So today I'm going to be making a bin cage. Um, I am actually making this for Arwen and Lumi, our two girl Syrians. I'm making this because their bins now are just a tad smaller than the new bins that I'm getting, as well as they're modified differently, and I'm going to modify the new ones to suit them a little bit better. So the things I'm using first and foremost um, is a Dremel. Now you can use pretty much anything to cut through the bins. I found that a Dremel works the best. Um, I have both the cutting tool and the sanding tool. If you only have the cutting tool, you'll need sandpaper and high knocks. Let's get back down, okay? Thank you. Um, if you don't want to use a Dremel or you don't have a Dremel, uh, you can get these really affordably online, um, especially like the mini kits. But if you don't want to buy one, you can actually use um, like a box cutter or a Stanley knife or an X-Acto knife and you can heat it up and cut right through the plastic or you can use a hair dryer and heat the plastic and cut right through it. Um, if you check out a few tutorials on how to do bin cages, uh, there are lots of different methods. Um, I do suggest if you are using like a box cutter or an X-Acto knife to drill holes along where you're cutting and it'll make it easier to cut. Along those lines, I also have a drill. This is to zip tie the mesh to the plastic um, as well as extra air holes because I'm not going to be meshing the whole lid. I'm also not going to be meshing the side of the lid or the, the side of the bin. If you've seen their bin cage tour previously, you know that I did that the last time. Um, I have a ruler. You can also use a measuring tape. These are wire cutters. They're actually small ones. If you prefer bigger ones, get bigger ones. There's a sharpie to mark off everything I'm measuring. Zip ties. I have both white and black because I haven't decided on what colors I'm color I'm using yet. This is the hardware cloth I'm using. It's um, two feet by ten feet, and I believe it is. Um, it should say what the gauge is. Oh, and the the holes are half inch by a half inch. I wouldn't go any bigger than that. You can go smaller than that. If you do go smaller than that, make sure you still get a thick gauge hardware mesh because if you get things like screening and they reach it, they can actually chew through it. I have duct tape. This isn't pertinent to how I make the bin, um, but it is going to be a little bit of decoration. If you've seen their current bins, you probably already know what I'm going to be doing with this. Hey, you nosy. Let's get out of here. Huh? Let's get out of here. Kiss me. Beep beep. Better get down. Why don't you guys go play? Go play. I'm also going to be using a smaller bin. You'll have to measure your wheel. Um, I'm using this because their current wheels are too high for the bins that they are in. So this basically, you'll cut a hole in the lid the size of this, tie this down, and this is going to be where their wheel will go um, to make the lid higher. I'm not exactly sure what size this is, but I did get it from Walmart, and it is, I mean, size comparison. It's not that big, but it's not super small. Measure your wheel. Um, you may not have to use one of these at all. Last, of course, is the bin. They are currently in um, 110 quart bins. I am bumping them up just slightly to 116 quarts. It isn't a significant difference, um, but it is a difference. I believe that the 116 quart bin comes out to be about 660 square inches, whereas the 
110 comes out to be about 612 square inches. As you can see here are the dimensions. In order to find out how many square inches uh, your bin is, if you plan on making a bin and it's a different size, is you'll take the length down here times the width and multiply those. And um, you need it to be over 360 squ square inches. Now, my next step is that I am going to be using the Dremel. Now, if you are under the age of 18, I do not want you using one of these without either supervision or at all. Um, I highly recommend getting an adult to do this step. If you are over 18, still be very careful. You need safety glasses. and. Um, if you are really, really, really concerned, you may want to um, use safety gloves. I've used this multiple times, so I'm not too concerned about it. You also want to be in a decently well ventilated area um, like I am, like a wide open room or by a window or something like that because the way this works is it does actually melt through the plastic. So be safe when using power tools or don't use the metal. If you have other nosy animals, um, you may want to put them up. I figured he'd be afraid of this, but apparently he isn't. So. Now I need to go ahead and put him somewhere because I don't want him jumping up here while I'm cutting. Okay, so I have both panels cut out. And now I'm just going to sand off the little plastic bits with my Dremel. And I'm going to be using the little sanding tool thing which has seen better days because it does actually have some plastic on it. I have another one but I'm gonna use this one up first. Okay, so we have the lid back on and the mesh is over it now because I sort of 
rounded up <laughs> on uh, the measurements, which is of course fine because you can always add or you can always take some off, but you can't add. Um, but because of that, there is just a little bit more on these sides than there is on these sides. And I'm holding this down because I haven't shaped it yet. So, um, basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take my drill and I'm going to, in theory, drill holes so that I can connect this mesh to here using zip ties. Now I'm using zip ties instead of something like duct tape because it is more secure and since I have a cat who I guarantee is going to be sitting up here, I need the extra support where I can get it. I'm going to drill a hole in the bin lid here all the way around so you know like a quarter of an inch in and then I'm going to be drilling a hole in the small bin about a quarter of an inch up and then zip tying them together and then of course I'm going to be taping all the way around so that any gaps that there are, like this one here, where I've come in just a little bit um, too much. Well, actually, okay, it's not too bad. But any, any little gaps will be covered. Okay, to make sure that my holes in my bin line up with the holes in the mini bin <laughs> I'm going I already drilled the holes in the big bins lid so what I'm gonna do with my sharpie is just mark the holes that I need to be drilling and I don't think you can really see them but I can um, but I'm gonna mark where they go so that they line up okay so now that the little bin is zip tied onto the big bin's lid and is not going anywhere. I did use quite a few because I was worried that the cat might sit on it. <laughs> um, but now that that is on there and the mesh is on there, technically you're done. Um, I'm not done because to me this is just kind of, well it's pretty ugly. I mean, if we're being honest, it's fairly ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate. So I'm going to cover this whole thing in duct tape like I have uh, their previous bins just to make it a little neater and a little nicer. Okay, so the lid is done and you might be thinking, oh well, the duct tape's a little boring. Um, but I sort of just did what I personally prefer and I usually wear black and black is sort of my color so um, mine is just black and then blue and pink cheetah print as you can see there. So there's the, the blue and pink cheetah print so that's there and then the black and then I did zoom back out. I did line the inside here with black duct tape, which this little piece should be off.
So thank you all for watching and um, stay tuned for Cage Tours for the Girls. I'll see you next time. Bye.